Today I just want to address how to handle email attachments from Gmail. I had a comment on my other video about processing uh, inbound invoices into Xero. Someone was asking how to get it working with Gmail and I thought surely this is simple. So I dived in to try and update my template for them and I found it way more complicated than it needed to be. Honestly, it was a bit shit. So let's dive in, I'll try and explain the problem and hopefully the solution. Okay, so we're over in NA10 and this all looks probably a bit convoluted and perhaps I'm overcomplicating things. And if, you, if I am overcomplicating things and you do know a much simpler solution, then chuck it in the comments. Otherwise, let's dive in and hopefully I can demonstrate this issue to you. So um, I've just got an email over in, my, uh, over in my inbox and hopefully I can pick that up here. So I'll show you here. I've got this email at the top which contains a, an invoice and a receipt. And it also contains a little bit of HTML crap from my signature. So let's hope that that picks it up. It's certainly been what's getting picked up in my testing. So I'm going to test this workflow here and hopefully show you the problem. And if that's worked, then great. Okay, I've got uh, binary information. It's picked up a couple of JPEGs, like I said, from my signature and whatnot. Um, but most importantly, it has picked up the attachments of the invoice and the receipt. And thinking to, back to my zero invoice processing, this is the information that I actually want to process. So if I want to pass that binary information to, let's say, extract from a PDF, and I've got multiple attachments like this, uh, I'd attach that node. And by default, what comes in here is uh, data. And of course, if I run that, it's not going to work because these attachments are uh, not labeled data, so I get an error. But what I could, in theory, do is I could run, I, I could take that and punch that in there, attachment zero, because that's what it's actually called, and run that. And of course, that's also going to error because um, that file is not a uh, not a PDF. So let's let's take this one here. And test that step and now that should actually work i should be able to extract data from there so you're probably thinking great okay uh if i have a look at the output sure enough it's extracted some test some text so you're probably thinking okay cool we can surely loop through that or just push all these in um using an expression like the one that i um just deleted. So we've got this run index zero. So we've got attachment zero, uh, zero, one, two, three, and four. And if I run that, uh, by default, this here is set to stop workflow. And what happens is it gets an error and it stops. And of course, if I uh, continue on error, it's only going to process the first one and it will just basically spit out that it has an error. Now, it becomes very difficult to work with this because I don't really have an easy way of filtering out or manipulating uh, the file information or the metadata of the files that I'm working with. And the reason for that is, uh, if I just expose here the table, is that nowhere in this table, and I probably won't try not to bore you reading everything and just take my word for it, and certainly if you've worked with this, you'll know that there's no um, there's no actual information about the attachments except for the binary. So I can access that through some expressions, but it's not ideal when we're dealing with uh, future nodes. We want the information to be part of our JSON, so we can uh, essentially go to table and just drag and drop these things into our expressions. So that being said, uh, let's dive in and look at this convoluted solution. And as I say, if you've got a, a simpler solution, then please let me know in the comments. So first thing I'm going to do here is just disable this, this testing little workflow that we did to show the problem. And then we're going to dive into this solution. And I should say that I'm going to just extract this solution as a template and put it into the community. So if you want to skip setting all this up yourself, jump, uh, jump over into the community. I'll put the link in the show notes and you can just download this uh, as a template and you can put this in front of any workflow that you want to work with. That being said, let's dive into this Gmail trigger and I forgot to mention before that Gmail triggers by default have Simplify turned on and therefore you're not going to download any attachments. So first thing to do is turn off that rock switch and add the download attachments and actually download the attachments and let's go ahead and fetch our test event. Hopefully the correct email is still at the top of my thing and it is. Cool, we have some binary data and let's jump over and just work through it. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm filtering. Basically, I'm referencing the uh, the previous node, but I'm explicitly um, 
explicitly referencing a specific node in case I move nodes around. I think that's good practice. Uh, and then I'm accessing the uh, .item .binary, and all that's doing is checking if there's any binary data. And I should also point out that this exists thing is coming from object exists. The reason is you can see here that I'm getting returned an object for all for my binary data. So if that exists, let's carry on. And of course that does exist. We already know that. Uh, press on to the next step. And the next step seems counterintuitive because I'm getting my Gmail message information and my binary data again. But the reason is because I've put a node in between that and the rest of my workflow. And with binary data, you need it to pass directly to the next node. At least I think that's the case anyways. So what I'm doing here is just getting a message and I'm just referencing the message ID that I had in the trigger, okay? So I've got, uh, again, specifically referencing a particular node, so the Gmail trigger, .item, .json, and .id, and you could just drag that in like that and it will create it for you, okay? So we'll test that step and we'll get our binary data. Cool. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split out some information and that information is essentially gonna be the the names of the, well, the names of the, the index, if that makes sense. So the attachment zero, attachment one, attachment two, and so forth, and also the metadata. So we'll start with the top row here where I'm splitting out the, what is the keys, if you will, in the, in the binary object. So create an edit fields node and in the top field, create this name's arbitrary but I've called it attachments it could be attachments index or something like that and the type that we're looking for is an array so uh, here you can see that I'm accessing the gmail node that could equally be the gmail trigger node and I'm accessing the item.binary and .keys and this might be more clear if I get rid of the uh, the keys there and you can see that I'm getting uh, an object full of uh, you get I'm getting like an array full of uh, objects, if you will. So I want to get the keys from my key value pair, which is attachment zero, and separately in the other branch, I want to get the metadata and merge all together into a JSON object so it's easier to work with. So let's return the keys. I'm going to get an array here of attachment zero, one, two, three, and four. And then I also want to extract the message ID there. So let's just uh, go ahead and run this, and there's no other field. So uh, that's going to be a string. So let's test that. Cool, and you can see it's probably better viewed from the table view. And I've got attachment 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And they're all associated with this message ID, but it's all one object. So the next thing to do is I'm going to split that out. So I'm going to split out the attachments and then all other fields. So let's test that step. Perfect. And now I've got, I keep saying four <laughs> because of course the index starts at zero. So now I've got five separate objects. Um, all associated with the correct with the right message ID and it'll become clear why I'm getting that message ID later hopefully but basically in my object that I get for each attachment I want the message ID so that I can work with the correct message later on now in this bottom branch here I'm basically doing the exact same thing except for instead of the attachment index I feel like that label should be changed now I'm getting the attachment metadata so I'm just simply changing that keys to values and now you can see I'm getting an array of all the metadata and it'll probably become more clear when I actually test the step. Cool so we're looking at the table view and you can see that I've got the metadata for these items 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and again the message ID and then it's, this is just literally a copy and paste of that above uh, node so I'm splitting out based on attachment metadata and if I run that step now we've got a table where I've got the message ID associated with the metadata, but I don't have the index or the name of the attachment that I want to actually work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to merge these two branches back together. And I'm going to have, uh, I think by default, the mode is append. So change that to combine, or oh, that might be wrong, might be combine. Um, certainly the combine by is based by default on matching fields. So change this to combine by position. So that way we're gonna get index zero or attachment zero combined with the metadata from that same one. So let's run that test step. Cool, and this is exactly what we wanna see. So I quite like the JSON view of this actually. So now I can see that I've got like a, an array of objects here where I've got my message ID associated with the correct attachment and all the metadata. Now it's gonna get a lot easier to work with 
except for we don't have the actual attachment. So what to do is just grab this uh, get message node and link that into the um, excuse me, link that into this far away merge over here. And this filter here is perhaps not necessary, but in the workflow that I'm referencing in terms of the zero invoice processing, I only want to be dealing with PDFs. So you could take this or leave it, but I've just got this filter here where I'm basically filtering based on the uh, attachments metadata file type. So you can see that's coming in here. And the first result is going to be image, and the second result is going to be image, and the next result's image, and then I've got a PDF and a PDF. Okay, so I only really want to keep the PDFs. So if I uh, run that filter and filter out the images, and then what I'm going to do is merge these objects based on the um, message ID and the ID, and that might seem a little bit convoluted as well. So I'll just explain myself. Um, by default, this is turned off, assuming fields name field names match. So here I've got message ID coming from the um, coming from the filter node or coming from the merge node, really. So let's go there. So I've got message ID that I want to merge, and then from the Gmail node. It's just called ID, so that's there. So I want to merge based on that, so let's have ID. And if I run that, what I should get, and it's a bit horrible to read, if I look at my table, then I've now merged uh, the message ID, the attachment, the attachment metadata only for my PDFs. And this all gets a bit horrible because it merges with the message itself, so I'm getting uh, a lot of HTML because I've sent HTML signatures and stuff. So it gets a little bit sort of hard to read, but if I scroll down here, you should see, um, oh, there we go, just about there. I scroll back across to the left, that I've got the, the other PDF attachment. Um, and now I can work with that. So I just want to demonstrate similar to the where I started, where I want to actually extract information from these files here. So if I now uh, punch this in, so I want to extract from PDF uh, and I just want json.attachment, so you can see that that's now going to hit attachment 03 and hit test step. And if I just come to my JSON data here, you'll see that I have actually extracted the information from, in this case, uh, the first invoice. I've been given the information and then also it's done it again for the second invoice. So it's it's pushed both of those just by using the JSON.attachments. Hopefully you can see how much easier that's gonna make uh, gonna make it to work with NA10 and these Gmail attachments moving forward. Uh, that's all I wanted to cover today. If you've got anything else you want me to share with you, let me know in the comments. Until next time, have a good one.